Today's classic LGBT movie is the 1999 classic, but I'm just a cheerleader. Megan is a lesbian. She's got the conversion girl. Will she straighten out? Come out? Either way, Deb and I are gonna duke it out on the Real Watch List Plus. Yay, 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 yay. <laughs>we're gonna be honoring the LGBT. Yes, classic gay cinema. And we're going to be reviewing today, But I'm a Cheerleader, which can be streamed on Tubi. It's a 1999 film. It's about a very naive teenager. She's sent to a quirky camp by her conventional parents for conversion therapy to make her heterosexual. Now that sounds like a heavy duty theme. It does. But it is kind of camp and quirky and crazy. So Deb. Yeah. Are you dressed up like a cheerleader? Yeah, I, I'm very and, much so. I even have my name on the back, oh. but I don't know that I can move because I might get yelled at because I do have a mic on. I don't want to oh, rip it out. Don't mess right? up the mics. But yes, I'm a cheerleader, and I wish the orange matched the pink, but this is what you get. That's okay, and you have And I have my Higgins. ponytail, yes. and I have my, my uh, pink, uh, pink bow. thing. Bow. I don't even know what it is called. Or bow, yes, B-O-W, B-O-W. B -O -W. So you're all decked out. Yes. I'm and how about you, out. darling? Well, I am dressed up as a cheerleader today in recognition of, but I'm just a cheerleader. But I guess I'm just a cheerleader today. I will say it's a little bit snug. <laughs> I'll I say it's I will say a little I'm having a too. problem. Don't, are you looking I, at it? I'm wondering. What are you looking at? Why? I don't no know. Do you have wonder, underpants babe. on there? No, no need to wonder. Are you going so, regimental? I, I can't do the cross leg thing. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work. Anyway, maybe you should have shaved your legs. So Maybe. No. No? That's me. Okay. That, that's me. So this is how we honor. We're, we're little cheerleaders today. We're little cheerleaders today, blah, and we're going to have some fun today with this movie. Yes, we are. Well, it is serious, but the whole point of this movie is that they're taking a serious issue and yeah. making it campy. Yes. To point out how crazy conversion therapy is, how the LGBT community has to, back in 1999, had to deal with issues like being, quote, straightened out by their family. Right by their friends. Um, why don't we go a little bit into the movie? Or should we do this? Well, the, maybe we should show movies. our paddles because that promotes so. us to either fight or agree with each other or whatever fight we do. Fight or flight. Yes. On the count of three. One, two, three. three. Flip. What? <laughs> I don't. I'm palming you. Oh, you want to do that? Oh, yeah, fine. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, 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 hit me. Oh, 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 I hit you. Oh I didn't God. mean to hit you. I'm you sorry, did. Joe. I didn't mean to get so ultra-violent. Megan is the lead character, played by Natasha Leone. She plays this all-American cheerleader. Blonde hair, puffy, loves cheerleading, loves to be with the girls cheerleading. Um, she has a boyfriend, like any all-American cheerleader would have. Yes. The typical jock at high school. Because being a cheerleader, you're rather popular when you're in school. Correct. But she kind of doesn't know it. She's just being herself. She has a locker filled with pictures of women. When she looks at girls cheerleading, she looks at them like, oh. And she's kind of loves cheerleading. And she's just fascinated by it. Mm -hmm. But her family and friends get together. Mm, they suspect something. They suspect she's a lesbian. So just like any intervention, she walks into the room with her boyfriend who they try to make out and it's like, you know, one of yeah, these- she's like, not she, interested, she's really. not interested. She's not interested. He can't kiss, she can't kiss. Maybe he's gay, who knows? But he suspects she's a lesbian. Her friend suspects she's a lesbian. Her parents, who are kind of straight, laced, all American suburban, couple, they sit around and you need to go to conversion camp. True Directions, as it's called. First, she has to kind of like admit she's a lesbian. And the funny part is she's sitting around a bunch of other wannabe converted from gay to straight other teenagers sent by their parents. Um, and that's part of the irony of this movie. It is kind of like the same model as AA. Yes. Where you get everybody together that has a similar thing and they're trying to solve a problem, but they all have something in common, which kind of is maybe could be a little bit dangerous if you don't know which direction you're going in. You're exactly right. And yeah. Jamie Babbitt, the writer-director, uh, points out this kind of like uh, irony 
in a comedic way. Um, her mother actually ran a drug and alcohol, um, not a camp, but like a rehab. Yeah, rehab. And it was called, I think it was called Next Directions or something along those lines. But anyway, she ran a rehab and she got a lot of her ideas about therapy and um, through that mm -hmm. experience. Um, but she found it really interesting that if you're going to send your child, your teenager, to a conversion camp with other gay or lesbian kids, well, you're sending them to a place where they could actually be fond of their Yeah, it's housemates. like you're giving an alcoholic um, conversion, you know, to stop in a liquor store. Mm -hmm. You're like putting them in a liquor store so right. that you can teach them something. Right. And, so, it, and it's funny because... And plus, the big okay. thing is, yeah, yeah. they're all in the same room. Right. Sleeping together in one room at all night the girls with the beds together? right next to each other. Mm -hmm. All the girls are together. All the boys are together. Mm -hmm. And of course, with raging hormones as teenagers will have. Yeah, we all remember that, don't we? Yeah. Yes, we remember those days. Thank God for Cialis. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't take Cialis. I just know he people. He just knows. He's that. watched lots of commercials. Lots of commercials. He knows. He's True Directions actually is a step program in the conversion of homosexuals to heterosexuals. The first step is to admit your homosexuality. Megan is sitting there with all these other teenagers, and the director is like, you know, admit, admit. And she realizes, oh my God, I'm a lesbian. Prior to that, she had no idea. She was just it's being herself. They pushed her into it. Right. Yeah. They they wanted her to admit it. To her, it was just being herself. And then right. when she admits it, she admits it in such a way that, oh my God, it's something wrong. Something's bad about me because I'm a lesbian. Oh my God. She starts tearing and crying. The second part of it is actually to rediscover gender identity by doing gender associated tasks. Which Boys is a, and girls. Fun, a funny part of the picture because, you know, it'd be like women in the kitchen making brownies and, you know, mm -hmm. sewing and needlepoint and, and the vacuuming. guys are out, yeah, vacuuming, the guys are out digging a ditch and they're building a fence. That part is so stereotypical. Matter of fact, it makes you laugh, but it makes you cringe at the same time. Like, yeah. okay, every girl must want to get married and be a housewife and look at the bridal gown and be, oh, I want to be that. And you could see that kind of like, uh, these girls are not so comfortable with that, but they want to do that because their parents want them to be heterosexuals. Right. Um, find the root of homosexuality. Find out like where it actually happened and select opposite sex partners. So they're actually forced to be with another partner. Matter of fact, there's a scene to me was really uncomfortable was when um, Eddie Cibrian, who I love, plays the role of rock. Um, the director's son. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, he has, he's, he's right on there. No, tipping he, fence. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's gay, but he's not a minute. Eddie Cibrian's not gay, unfortunately, but he's not gay. But the character Rock is, but he's being converted to by his mom, quote, the director. Right. And he's having simulated sex with Claire Duvall, who plays the role of Graham. And they're in these one piece suits and they put fig leaves on the private parts and the director's like, oh, go and thrust. And, and I'm thinking, it's funny, but I'm really uncomfortable watching this happen. Well, because real conversion therapy, and I, you know, I don't want to get in a kind of political vein, but there was a politician who believed in that just mm -hmm. in recent years. And um, the conversion places were really kind of brutal in a way. Especially at that time too. So you talk yeah. about 1999 when conversion therapy was uh, promoted quite a bit by certain religious groups. Seeing them trying to reenact is like, Ugh. and then it ends with a mock wedding where the family comes and there's a joyous occasion and the boys and the girls walk down the aisle and then they, you know, yeah. partner up in a mock wedding. So it really makes fun of this whole idea of conversion therapy in a comedic way. Gay men are known for its camp classic cinema and even current classic cinema. But this was kind of new and Jamie Babbitt made it a point that she didn't see anything that was prevalent with lesbian films. Prior to this film, you had films like Watermelon Woman that represented lesbians as very butch. Yeah. And she made it a point That's to make Megan, a yep, yeah, make very Megan an all American girl. Demure, yeah. you know, right. a cheerleader, who else? I mean, that's all American. But do you feel that in the film that it was almost like 
she would have never crossed over until maybe she was maybe 40 or something, but it pushed her into it in a way. It's funny because you use the word pushed into it. And I know a lot of LGBT folks might get offended by like the pushed into it. She wasn't to me. Yeah, I, I think apologize. She was, I don't matter. Yeah, no, I don't think you're saying anything bad. Different please, way. Okay. please. You know what? That's part of the, the issue here is okay. that when someone says something, don't get offended. That's what they know. That's what yeah. they, they are comfortable with and have that discussion like we are right now. Exactly. So they were trying to force her to come out <clears throat> before she could almost figure out what she was. And when they forced her to come out, it was like a bad thing. Like right. It should be celebration. It should be acceptance. Um, I think if they didn't force her to come out, she would just be like, I'm just a girl. I'm just well, having fun. I'm cheerleading. And, and, and she would have realized at some point who she was attracted to, why, and yeah. all that, instead of like ramming it down. Well, a lot of it too. And we actually, when we drove here today, we talked about it in the car a bit, mm -hmm. that a lot of people that ended up coming out, um, I had a background in theater. And at the beginning of the show, we would always say that kid by the end of the show is going to come out because you're around people. There are a lot of, you know, right. but also, if you're living in your parents' house and they're rather conventional, it, 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 you, you would be afraid to in a way. So yep. a lot of kids, I think, didn't come out until they got their own apartment or maybe went to college or something. Mm -hmm. I don't well, know. I didn't come out until I was in my 40s. I mean, I was dating men, but we were buddies, you know, and, you know, we were hanging out and we were friends. Yeah. And whether ple people believed it or not, no one would kind of talk about it. Some right. people did believe it. Some people kind of didn't. Um, so there's no rhyme or reason or appropriate time. It's based on the individual and it shouldn't be forced. It shouldn't right. be pushed, whether it's social media, whether it's, you know, family. But what was really fascinating to me was how Jamie Babbitt used color to portray right feeling and the tempo of the whole movie. Right. I was going to say something about the color palette. It was very candy-like. There were pale pinks and greens, which is kind of like spring mm -hmm. and represented that in a way. And then blues when the boys were, but they were really very saturated colors. Right. And when the movie first starts out and she's in suburban, the palette is very brown. Yes. Everyone else around her is in like brown shaded clothing, right. the house, the interior. Um, and then she sort of gets out of that and right. goes into the color, like pink and blue, because blue is supposed to be. And the parents poison. even had the fish on the wall, the flaps. Mm -hmm. Did you notice yes. that? Yeah. So if you look at the production design and the set design, it's very, I'd say, not middle class, but very conservative Midwestern middle class, yeah. which they wanted to portray and did a good job doing it. So uh, there's a connection between one of the cast members and you. Do you know that? Why, was there Higgins in there? No, there was no Higgins. It is like Oh, I know what it is. All right. Can I say it? What if I think you guess it is? right, I will cheer for you. If you don't, Kathy I'm going to throw this Yes, and why? Yay, Debbie! Yeah, Debbie's right. <laughs> Kathy Moriarty was in Raging Bull, and she was um, uh, Robert De Niro's The Fighter's Wife. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I hate to be mean, and I don't mean to be mean, but everybody thinks it. She's one of the people that didn't age that well, but in this picture, she looked really good. Yeah, they did her up. She did really look nice. Yep. And uh, yeah, when I saw her, I thought, wow, there you go. Yep. You know? And if you remember, her name was Mary Brown. She was the director of True Directions, kind of a Faye Dunaway-esque kind of character. Mm -hmm. Tough, you know, demanding. Matter of fact, if you look deeper, maybe she was suppressing her true self. Well, I think that happens a lot in society. Mm -hmm. Even people that are like really homophobic and crazy. I think there's that since ancient Roman and Greek mm -hmm. times, that little underpinning of, you know. Also, Kathy Moriarty uh, asks a character in the film if she wants to be a raging bull dyke. It's one of the lines in the movie. Yeah, right. And that was a nod to Raging Bull, of course. And you know who, when my husband and I were watching this for the umpteenth time, um, every time the credits come up in the beginning, beginning credits, and then when we see the actress, we always scream. Do you know who that would be? Oh, I don't know. RuPaul. Mink Stoll, Mink Stoll. Classic actress who played um, in many of the John Waters films, many of the gay camp movies. She played in Pink Flamingos. Yes. In Hairspray. Yep. The original. 
And in Eating Out, for those that don't know Gay Camp, the Eating Out series. Is it Eating Raul? One of those movies, the Eating Raul? No, 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 no. Okay, no. Eating Out, oh my God. It's Eating Out like one, two, and three, oh God, four, five. Oh God, Eating Out, please, so okay. It's, yeah, thank so you. So anyway, camp, let's, let's, let's not go off the rails here. Okay. RuPaul is in it? RuPaul made a name from not only his upbringings, he used to do drag in New York City. Um, he made a name with his top single, Supermodel. Um, and of course, later on did Drag Race. Right. But before then, people within the gay community knew that he was a drag queen, perform, drag performer, but when they saw this movie and he played a straight yeah. counselor to try to tell the boys to be straight, not in costume, not, yeah. in, not in drag, sorry, sorry, my drag friends, not in drag, it was like, whoa, who's that? Like, so this movie was important because a lot of discussion, and I call it the push-pull. Yeah. You had a series of <laughs> celebrities, notable people coming out um, during the 90s, Greg Luganis, Ellen DeGeneres, um, and so there's oh, yeah. this whole visual appearance of people that knew Ellen DeGeneres, for example, from her show, from her... And it was still a little scary because some people that came out, it kind of wrecked their career a little bit. Correct. After Ellen came out, her show didn't last too much longer, did it? Right. Because she had all those housewives and everything every day and they, you know, they probably were like, uh, whatever. There's a couple things about, I want to say about the, the, the style of this picture though. Um, the music set the stage. It was a little cartoony in the beginning, but it, 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 I think it was meant that way to let you know that it was a spoof, it was quirky. It had exaggerated hyperbole throughout it, which means, you know, exaggeration, to appeal to all audiences to not take itself too seriously. I think even though it was great for young people coming out, and maybe, you know, I, I know, I've talked to a lot of young gay people and they go, oh my God, but a cheerleader, they just love it. But I think that's another thing to get, you have to get a whole audience too. You can't just have that core audience, you know? Right, but if I may jump in, the <clears throat> Jamie Babbitt, the writer director, was pissed because originally they, the um, movie, uh, MPAA. Motion Picture Association of America? Correct, they wanted to rate it as NC-17. Yeah. Because of its content and yeah. she, she balked at that because she said, wait a minute, you just had American Pie come out with- Well, she might have altered the scenes a bit too. And she did, they, she was forced to alter some of the scenes and there wasn't anything, any nudity, there wasn't, but it was just suggestive. But the and humping she, on the bed and all that with the fig leaves on was, you know. Right. And the, but, and, and the and, dialogue and, around it, like, you know, I don't even want right. to say it, you know, you well, can imagine. Right, but the dialogue, if it was rated at NC-17, forget it. It would have never made it out to the theaters. Right. By getting an R rating, at least it, it got out there for the public to see. Um, she claims that, you know, there's, the rating system is so much harsher to gay cinema back then. Yes. I don't know how much, so much of it is now, but no. back then definitely. No, it's changed. Yeah. Rating systems have changed a lot. Right. A uh, lot, and, that, and that's because of streaming as well, because you know, there's some things where anything goes. I know I watch this on my television, and I have a really good set because my son gave me this fantastic TV, but I found the sound editing in the beginning a little uneven for the first 15 minutes. Um, and that happens a lot now with pictures because a, a sound is overproduced, music is overproduced, and you'll be like turning this set up to hear the dialogue and then turning it down when music comes on. It just is really kind of crazy. It didn't have any kind of preachy somberness to it, which is good. Right, right. So I saw it for what it was, mm -hmm. not being, being a straight person, and I'm learning a lot by doing this month of LGBTQ. Even right. though I have a ton of gay friends and all that, I still am learning things by watching these, some mm -hmm. of these films that I haven't seen. Right. You know, and I love to see things I haven't seen because I want to see everything. Well, I love being here with you. Oh, my darling, yes, I, I love so being much. here with you as well. But what I want to add on, because I think conversion therapy is really important, um, Exodus. Um, proclaiming spending $600,000 in ad space around that same time the movie was out, yeah. um, saying that, yeah, we have proven the fact that people can be homosexual and then convert back to heterosexuality. Yeah. Of course, later on disputed, states of uh, nowadays, a lot of them, 19 of them, have actually banned conversion therapy, but there's still many, so many more states 
22, I believe, that don't have any laws banning it. Some that actually says you can't ban it. So it's still out there. I remember the, the story of when I proposed to my husband and it was out on YouTube. I put it out on there, the proposal, and people were celebrating, congratulatory. Mm -hmm. And then a relative of mine told another relative, oh, send him to a doctor, send him to a doctor. And this is 10 years ago. And I'm like, what? People actually still think that way? And here, for someone who's gay, you like, oh, you hear about another gay person, but when it happens to you, I'm like, holy, people can I know. think that you can go to a doctor and magically become straight. So exactly. folks, you cannot convert someone who's gay, LGBT, into something that they're not. Right. So if we have any younger audience members out there, you know what? Feel free to reach out to us. Feel free to see these movies. The Craft. 1996 movie and uh, it's about a coven of witches in high school that have a lot of overtones of lesbianism. A Catholic school newcomer falls in with a group of teen witches who yield their power against anyone who crosses them. And it goes over the line a little bit. Okay, The Virgin Suicides, 1999. And it's about five mysterious sisters who are sheltered by their strict religious parents. Blue is the warmest color. These things are probably streaming. I did look them up. They, I think you can see them very easily, especially, let me just interject with Turner Classic Movies for the month of June is doing LGBT cinema. They're highlighting documentaries, narrative films, and directors pretty much the whole month. Go online, you can see all their stuff. Blue is the warmest color is from 2013. It's a story about a young girl's life changed when she meets another girl with blue hair and allows her to discover her desires. So it's a lesbian picture. And Love, Simon from 2018, a young boy keeps his sexual orientation a secret from his parents, but when a blackmailer comes along and threatens to reveal it, he goes on a roller coaster ride to come to terms with his life. So those are all kind of teen related in the same vein as this picture. Maybe some are a little bit more serious, but still it's about coming out and transgressing into a newfound world that you wanna be in, but you're worried about. This week's sponsor is the Tyler Clementi Foundation. Many years ago, my husband and I met Jane Clementi at a Pride event. It was a her first New York City Pride Parade. And we got to talking to her about her son, Unfortunately, her son had passed away, committed suicide because of cyberbullying. One night, Tyler asked his roommate, he was a Rutgers student, 18 years old, asked his roommate uh, for some privacy because he had a date. What he didn't know was the roommate had put a computer cam uh, in the area where Tyler and another gentleman had an intimate relationship. Oh boy. Found out later that his roommate had put it on Twitter and was about to put it on other social media outlets. And unfortunately, because of that pressure of being out there yeah. with such you know, intimacy, he committed suicide. His mother made an effort to prevent something like this from happening to any other young boy or girl. She created the Tyler Clementi Foundation, a nonprofit that works to end bullying, harassment, and humiliation online and offline. Their mission is to end bullying in school, workplace, and faith-based communities through education, advocacy, research, and collaboration. They have this great program. It's called the Upstander Program, and I'm wearing their gummy bracelets today. The Upstander Program encourages other people to step up when they hear something or they see an act of bullying. What really got her was that it wasn't just his roommate that put this out on social media. There were other students that knew this was happening and didn't step up and say, no, you gotta stop this. Mm -hmm. So they're asking people to sign their Upstander pledge that if people see an act of bullying, that they step up respectfully stop it because they say statistically within that first 10 seconds of bullying over 50 percent of that act of bullying will stop they provide 
toolkits to workplaces, to schools. It's interesting because they originally asked for a million pledges. They have millions. They've exceeded their initial goal. So we're asking folks out there to take a look at the Tyler Clemente Foundation on their website, sign up for their upstander program and pledge to be an upstander when they see bullying. So folks, don't stay silent. Don't acquiesce. Stand up and stop bullying. That's a great organization. I think it's a nice film. Oh, one thing I did like about it, I really liked the opening segment with the montage of the cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very clever getting you into the film. Right, that slow and kind motion, of beautiful. kind of yeah. like yeah, and it was like childlike it, sound. But it, it had a, it had a solid, strong mm -hmm. opening because a lot of pictures. You'll watch and you'll just go, okay, it's been 20 minutes and there's no momentum in this thing. Mm -hmm. But I think that to do that, and then of course you were seeing it from Megan's eyes. Right. Because Megan was always looking at the other cheerleaders. Right. Yeah. And, it, and it was great, especially for l people that were coming out that are lesbian. Because again, you're seeing gay camp, but you really didn't see any yeah. portrayal of lesbians coming out in a campy way. Exactly. So I think, you know, being in that, it was a low budget, very campy. It didn't get notoriety in the beginning, but later became a cult classic. Yeah. Uh, says a lot. So again, a great movie to watch and a great movie to sort of get a feel for the 90s and the... Also LGBT to community. give some kind of um, juge to young kids that they're not so afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 2024. Don't be so scared. Don't be scared, and you can always come to us. And folks. if your parents love you, they're not going to disown you. Yeah. Oh, Debbie. That. I know. A cheer to I that. only have one part. Debbie. 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 Oh, Debbie. 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 I know. I always said if my son were gay, his room would be neater. See, that was my thing. Oh, wait, that's so not true. <laughs> my room's a wreck. <laughs> well, your car, you know, is a little crazy. My car's a wreck. Yes. Yes. Give me a U. 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 Give me a B. B. Give me a subscribe. Subscribe. What is this spell? Subscribe. 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 It's free. It's free. It's the free. Bold Media Film. Woo. You'll see the raw twist plus every week. Subscribe. Subscribe. It's easy. It's easy. Go. 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 Subscribe. It's free. We need you. You. You, 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 you. Take it, take it, take it, take it.